100,000 years ago, up to a million humans roamed the Earth. Fast forward 30,000 years when the population dropped, just a few thousand people may have given rise to all modern humans. Something happened. Something big. Something that changed the course of human development. How did this happen? And does our 21st century civilization face the same terrifying threat? There are more than 6 billion people alive in the world today. In order to adapt to the different conditions across the planet, we've developed a wide variety of physical characteristics. We come in a huge range of colors, shapes, and sizes. But what's really amazing isn't how different we are on the outside, but how similar we all are on the inside. Professor Todd Disotel of New York University studies DNA, a kind of human barcode for our inherited physical characteristics. It's been estimated that there's a difference of only about one-tenth of one percent in the genetic information held in the DNA molecule between any two people, however different they may look and wherever in the world they originally come from. We all have more in common with each other than we might have thought. I find it absolutely fascinating how little genetic diversity there are amongst people throughout the world. You see people with different skin color, head shapes, hair types, and all of those things. Those differences seem to really be skin deep when we get down to the genetics. In fact, there's less variation in the DNA of all of the people alive on the planet today than in just one troop of chimpanzees in West Africa. The small genetic diversity and our huge population may tell us something important about our prehistoric past. That something happened to erase most of the human DNA record. Something that could have decimated the numbers of our ancestors. It's called a genetic bottleneck. A population collapse that wipes out a large amount of the DNA history. Today, they are commonly seen in endangered species. It's like what happens if you shake a range of colored balls out of a glass container. Here I have a large variable population represented by the five different colored gum balls. If this population shrinks by going through what we call a genetic bottleneck, here actually represented by a real bottle, I end up with a smaller pool with less genetic diversity. The human DNA record suggests that something may have driven our ancestors to the brink of extinction. The evidence in our genes may also tell us when this happened and how many prehistoric survivors made it through the genetic bottleneck. Scientists estimate the size of human populations from the past using mitochondria a sort of cellular battery pack that has its own DNA. Mitochondrial DNA is only inherited from the mother and does not combine with genetic information from the father. By starting with the total range of these genes identified in today's population, scientists can track back through the exclusively female line and estimate the number of childbearing women who lived in earlier generations. And the DNA that a child inherits is not always a perfect copy of their parents' DNA. It's a little like photocopying a picture and then photocopying the copy over and over again. Each imperfection moves forward to all the following copies and over time the picture can change significantly. 
So this is how I mutate after 20 generations of photocopying. Scientists can estimate the date and human population after a genetic bottleneck by comparing the rate of mutation and the present range of mitochondrial DNA variation. By looking at the pattern of mitochondrial mutations that we see on the planet today and using the known mutation rate of mitochondria, I can estimate that between 50 and 100,000 years ago, there was only a few thousand individuals that gave rise to the populations that we see on the planet today. If Dissotel's right, then we all owe our lives to these few thousand survivors. However, there may have been as many as a million prehistoric people alive before the start of the genetic bottleneck. Stone tools from more than a hundred thousand years ago have been found as far apart as northern Europe and China. But how far had our kind developed by this time? Were any of these creatures really human? The Natural History Museum in London is home to one of the largest ancient fossil collections in the world. Dr. Chris Stringer examines specimens from the collection to investigate how far our ancestors evolved by the time of the earliest predicted start of this population bottleneck. Geneticists estimate that human evolution began about six million years ago when the DNA of chimps in our species first separated. But the earliest signs of distinctly human characteristics appeared several million years later. By about two million years ago, we appear to have the first creatures we could call human. The face is starting to show human features. We've got the beginning of the development of a prominent nose, the base of the skull shows us that these creatures were walking upright and we've got the appearance of stone tools. Paleontologists use brain size, traditionally measured from the volume of beads that fit in a skull, as a marker of human development. This two million year old human had a 600 cc brain, much larger than a chimpanzee, but less than half the volume of a modern human. Over the thousands of years that followed, human brain sizes increased. By 100,000 years ago, fossils such as this skull from Israel had modern human dimensions. Essentially, this is a modern human skull. And uh, it shows us that modern humans had evolved by this time. They may well have appeared, first of all, in Africa as far back as 200,000 years ago. By then, early humans were creating more sophisticated types of tools to meet different needs. In this case, uh, this tool was probably used for its scraping surfaces, but we find they're shaping spear points, uh, they're shaping tools probably for working wood, and so we're beginning to get the evolution of specialized technology. And there are some clues that they were starting to think like us. Well, we've recently discovered evidence of symbolism from 100,000 years ago. We've got shell beads, so people are using body adornment. They're sending messages to each other, if you like, the beginning of art and creativity, the sort of thing that we find with modern humans. By 100,000 years ago, before the likely start of this genetic bottleneck, a range of prehistoric people were living across much of the planet, including the genetic line of modern humans. But some scientists believe that these intelligent, adaptable people were about to suffer a cataclysmic drop in numbers. So what apocalyptic event could have driven Stone Age man to the brink of extinction? A massive volcano, a destructive tsunami, or maybe a devastating asteroid impact.